you see the title? Is middle management the worst job ever? I want to tell you a story. I had a client, still have, still my client, young guy, 27 years old. And he applied for a promotion last year. And he was very confident he would get the job. You know, it was a middle management role at the company, advertising company in the UK. And essentially, he would be responsible to manage the team that he was already on. He got the promotion, he got the pay rise, but after that, things didn't go as expected. And you will ask me how, so let me explain. He realized after nine months that he was burned out, overworked, physical, and mentally exhausted. According to his words, every day became a struggle. He said, Evan, I really liked my job before I was promoted. And just like that, I didn't like it anymore. So after around, I think, 10 months, he resigned from the position. And then he said to me, I didn't realize until I stepped away actually how much I'd really taken on, he said. Middle management position. You know, as you see in the title, is middle management the worst job ever? I was a middle manager before. I coach a lot of middle managers. Middle management can be a very, can be a very tough job. Because you are in the middle. You are constantly toggling between supervisors above and supervisees below. So you're in the middle. And it can be an isolating, mentally, it can be an isolating position to be if you don't, ha if you don't know how to work it. And this guy, my client, you know, 27 years old, millennia, he has never really been to this position before, so he got burned out because he was feeling the pressure, he was feeling the squeeze. And you know why? Because if you're a younger manager, a millennial manager, you are far more likely than managers of other generations to get burnout. Why? Because of the growing... You grow up in a culture that glorifies overwork. You know, you go to Japan to work. You know, and in the pandemic, you know, with the pandemic also, you know, we are approaching the two-year mark. It is no wonder, it is no surprise to me that millennial middle managers are finding themselves exhausted, not motivated, demoralized, and stressed. And I don't blame them. Middle management, it is a challenging place to be. You need to report above, you need to supervise below. It can be lonely. You could be busy, but it can be lonely. 
is a tricky place thing is a tricky place to be middle management has always been tricky and, and you know sometimes middle management they go to kind of younger employees who are stepping up for the first time you know because you're a young manager you want to prove yourself you know you want to prove others you have the energy <clears throat> And by definition, you know, middle management requires you to play dual role. And this is tricky and this is challenging. You know why? Because you need to take responsibility for employees working under you. And at the same time, you need to report to those above you. So my client, this guy who got the job, you know, as a young manager, 27, he said to me that he felt that he had something to prove. And he said to me, you know, Evan, there is a lot of pressure to perform being young and in a management position. So to me, once he moved up, he moved up in the organization, he was actually confused where my position, where his position lined up with other managers. You know, he said to me that, and, uh, and, and maybe that's an internal issue, that's maybe a company problem, but he said to me, it wasn't always clear what those relationships were. And he said to me, most of the time, and most of the people I was working with, were much older than me, he said to me, and he felt that it was even more difficult for him. And this is a stressful place to be. It can create fatigue. You know, because you need to handle the issues of the employees below you while at the same time enforcing the policies of upper management. So it's a fine line to a healthy work environment. Don't get me wrong, the middle management position, it is a necessary position. But from a structure point of view, it is a difficult position. Structurally, it is a difficult position. It is a challenging position. And he said to me, you see, you know, even after nine months, nine, ten months, I didn't feel passionate about managing people anymore. And he said, I think I had to learn the hard way. And he was surprised, you know, I was quoting him. I was like a sounding board. He was surprised at how isolated he felt to be in the middle. He said, what, in the middle now you're supposed to be busy? Yes, busy, but isolated. You know, sometimes what happens in some companies, even though you're in the middle, you don't have a management team to work alongside. You just report up and then down. You report up, you report down. You have pressure from both sides. You know, it's tough to be the person who has to handle down policies or assigning, you know, tasks, delegates, you know, delegations that to other, you know, to your to your staff. Because it's you know what is a difficult part of middle management? It is to find the balance between compassion and what? Accountability. It is difficult sometimes to find the passion between, to the balance, sorry, to find the balance between compassion and accountability. You know, when do I push my staff? When do, I, when do I step back? 
You know, one of the characteristics of a successful leader is what? Successful leaders know how to balance three things. Relationships, results, ego. Relationships, result, ego. You need to balance them. Because if you're too results driven, you know, go, 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 go. Money, 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 sales, 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 result, result, result. You'll drive your people crazy. People, you, people will not want to work for you. Or only a certain type of people will want to work for you. On the other side, if you have too much ego about me, about me, about me, about me, people won't know the audience. And on the other side, if you focus too much on the relationships, results will not be there. So you really need to, if you want to be a good leader, to be able to manage those strings. Results, relationships, ego. You know? Because... On the, you know, if you want to balance, you know, how, how to balance compassion and accountability. On one hand, you have upper management who is saying, this is what we have to do. This is what we need to do. This is the vision or whatever. But middle managers see what is happening to the employees. And of course, you know, if you're a good manager, responsible manager, you have to take some level of responsibility. Because if you ignore what your direct people are telling you, what your staff are telling you, you're going to have burnout people. And that will hurt the bottom line. That will hurt, that will damage, that will slow down, that will reduce results. So the new leader that is emerging, that is coming up in the new normal, it is not only just about managing the work anymore. It is not only just about managing work, but it's also about managing the well-being of the employees as well. And you know, technology is another thing. You know, I am in my, I'm 40 years old. When I was 25 and I was managing two companies in England, in Bristol and in Swindon, I had two offices. Technology, it wasn't the same as it is now. Now, work follows me everywhere at all times because of technology. We had no WhatsApp groups. I would check my emails when I was in the office. You know, yeah, I had my phone and my SMS and all that. You know, right now, we have the absolute collapse of boundaries between work and life. So it's not easy to be a middle manager. You know, another thing with, you know, younger kind of managers, millennials, is that, you know, it's what some people say, it's, um, they call it like a sandwich generation. You know, sometimes they have kids at home, sometimes their parents live with them, and there is therefore dependence on, the, on, on either side. You know, it's like, it's like being a middle manager. You're always being pulled in two different directions. So, 
especially if you're a middle manager now during a pandemic with lockdowns, with uncertainties, it's tough. Because the pandemic intensified, if you think about it, work-related stressors of all kinds. You know, the transition to, you know, when you work from the office, when you work from your work location to remote work may the most, you know, if you think about it, the transition made the most basic aspect of the job, you know, the day-to-day, -day, you know, the middle management, the day-to-day -day management of employees much more difficult. And at the same time, the responsibility, the responsibilities of your staff mental and emotional state increased and you know what happened many middle managers found themselves struggling to keep their direct reports from burning out and sometimes what happened as well some companies fired people and that means placing more stress on the middle manager because you will end up taking on more work from your direct report or from the people that are not in the company anymore. You know, overloaded, you burn out. You know, people will talk on extra work. And they will not say no because that will look like, you know, that's a bad reflection on me. You know? You know, it's, it's not difficult, it's not easy. It, they're challenging times and being responsible for alleviating other people's burnout is a good way. I suggest that for middle managers to end up the burnout. And that starts, you know, a VC cycle, you, know? you, you can't be responsible for other people's burnout. Yes, you have to help, but you're going to end up burning. You will be the one who gets burned out. And then it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Because if you are burned out, if you are the leader and you're burned out, it makes it much more harder to support other people's well-being. You know, an overworked, burnout stressed out manager just lets the burnout continue you know and once the middle manager goes down there is no support network anymore i remember when i was in england again managing two companies the ceo when we used to train the ceo used to tell us sometimes hey leaders you know you know, before you go to work in the morning, dress up, you know, before you go and look yourself in the mirror. How do you look? Do you look burnout? out? Do you look tired? How do you look? You say, take a step back, relax for five minutes and see how do you look? Do you look like this? Are you tired? Are you fresh? Do you look rested? Do you look motivated? He said, your people in the office should want to become like you. But if you're burnout, out, if you look tired, if you're negative, if you're, if you're overworked, nobody wants to become like you. And you know, when people don't want to become like you, they will try to, they will find another job. They will go to work somewhere else. Look, but there are ways to reduce the stress. You need to avoid and you need to monitor overwork. You know, upper management should be enforcing reasonable work hours and banning, stopping. You know, it should be a law to text your employees after work hours, unless it is something really urgent. You know, it's all about establishing a culture within the company that says something like, Hey, look, 
it is not cool anymore to work up until 10 o'clock at night. Just 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, again, when I was in England, it was very strange where people finish 5, 6 o'clock, will finish 8, 9, 10 o'clock, go to the pub. Now it's not cool anymore to work until those hours. And also, if you're a senior manager, if you if senior manager, if you're a, a, you know, in upper management, you can also make sure that middle managers have the freedom, the empowerment, the flexibility to manage the teams as they see fit, as they see, it, you know. Because that will help them create, forge their own identity as a manager. As upper management, you don't want just to have a bunch of yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am managers. You know, setting clear expectations is very important. I understand that. And I coach senior leaders on that. But you can set clear expectations without micromanagement. Because if we move, if you take your organization from being task driven to from task driven to productivity driven, first of all, you will see that all employees are happier and you get more results. So from task driven to productivity driven. From being busy actually producing being busy doesn't mean anything you don't want to feel isolated you don't have to you don't want to have that distance and it's not easy again it is challenging and this is why the laws, the, you know, the books, the rules of leadership and management are kind of rewritten. And as Marshall Goldsmith famously said in his book, what got you here won't get you there. You know, as a mid, as you know, if you're a middle manager, you should take care to arrange to schedule meetings with upper management and underlink separately. You know, simple things like that. You know, if you look at it on the surface, on the facade, they look like no big deal. But psychologically, having that distance between and identities can really make it can make can really I believe make a difference and make it possible to perform both without them interfering with each other. Because if you are in the middle, you're gonna go crazy. It's like a marriage, you know. You have your parents on one side. You have your wife, sometimes you don't know what to do, right? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if you have practical experience, you will understand what I'm saying, what I will say here. Middle management, middle manager always feel like the rope, you know, but middle man, I mean, employees pulling that way. Senior management is pulling the other way and you are in the middle. So you are like this. And, you know, you also maybe need to acknowledge the fact that, you know, sometimes you need to acknowledge the fact that management is not for everyone. And companies can better serve their client, sorry, their employees. Employees should be treated like clients internally. 
you know, so what companies can do can better serve, and I'm using this verb, companies can better serve their employees by trying to find ways to create paths and roads for development and promotion that doesn't require people to become middle managers or to be responsible for other employees at all. I'm not sure it is possible. It's not easy, but you know, we need to understand sometimes that some people, they are not fit for management. You know, the guy told me, you know, when he resigned, he felt torn up, you know, sad when he left the company, the position. But at the same time, he said he knew deep inside him that this was the right thing to do for him. And he said, look, at the end of the day, I realized that I don't have the passion. I don't feel passionate, motivated about managing people. And he said, I have to learn the hard way. And he said, and I said, okay, what are you going to do next? And okay, fine. And he said, yes, I still want my career to move forward, obviously. And he said, you know, I want to do something to develop my career. Really good, really strong. I want to advance my career, but I don't want to be a manager. It is not an easy thing, right? And right now, during the pandemic, lockdown, non-lockdown, how many vaccines? It's a crazy world out there. You know, employees across all industries, all countries. I have clients from all countries. They are juggling. They are juggling really personal demands at home while at the same time trying to keep up with work. And this is maybe where situational leadership comes in. What is situa situational leadership is a method from uh, Blanchard, Kenneth Blanchard. And uh, if I remember well, Hersey, I think Paul, or I think Paul Hersey, who basically says that managers should use different leadership styles depending on the situation. This is why it's called situational leadership. And maybe I should talk about it in another video. And um, it, it, it's like, um, it's a model, it's like um, uh, they split into four, directing, coaching, delegating, supporting. This is their, 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 their situational leadership um, model. And that model allows them, allows you as a manager, for example, to analyze the need of the situation that you are in and then use the most appropriate leadership style, right? For example, um, you know, if you're a pilot, right? Uh, pilot in command and you have a crisis situation you know you have a technical issue and you know it's, it's, it's crucial you know probably you need to to take the directing um, approach okay which is if you put in a scale is high on direction low on support because if you are in a crisis, there is a technical malfunction of the aircraft. You're not going to say to the, um, to the to the pilot next to you, what do you think we should do, you know? You need to take control of the situation. So it's a high task focus, low relationship focus. Because the leader defines the roles and the tasks of the follower, you know, takes control of the situations and tells what needs to be done. Oh, it's not the time to delegate. Maybe, you know, you can do a bit of delegation as well, but it's not the time to coach now. You know, what do you think we should do? It's not the time to ask questions. So you need the directive, directing slash delegating model. So situational leadership is, is, is important during these times. And this is where emotional intelligence comes in as well. To understand your own feelings, to control them, or also to be able to understand other people's feelings. Yeah, so the situational 
the situational leadership model is depending on, you know, if you're looking from an organizational context, from a company context, business, depending on employees' competencies in the task, in their task areas, the areas and commitment to the task, you know, what they're supposed to do, what they're doing, your leadership style as a manager should vary from one person to another. And sometimes with the situational leadership model, you may even, you know, lead the same person one way sometimes and another way at other times. So thanks for watching. If you want to find more, if you are a leader, are a manager, are a CEO, and you feel that I can support you solving some of your most pressing challenges, this is my website, executivecoachasia.com. Go to my website, drop me a message, an email. Uh, my team will receive it. They will forward it to me, and we can um, schedule a first um, strategy call, introductory call, to get to know each other and see how I can support you as a manager, as a leader, solve some of your most pressing challenges with my solutions. Executivecoachasia.com. This was Evan Zivanakis. Thank you for watching. To your success. See you soon. Take care. Bye for now.